When you peer deeper into the world's most beautiful gems, you find many fascinating properties, including some that can be downright deadly. Today, we're checking out the most gorgeous stones that are hiding a dangerous secret. Some of them may surprise you. We'll start with an exotic green crystal, not emerald, peridot, or even savorite. This gem is known to many as the mineral from hell. This is torbernite. Found in granite deposits in places like Cornwall, England and Spruce Pine, North Carolina, torbernite occurs in transparent to translucent crystals vibrantly colored the shade of kryptonite. A member of the tetragonal crystal system, it is sometimes called green wolfenite due to the flat rectangular shapes of its prisms. Torbernite's formation is the result of a complex reaction between phosphorus, copper, water, and uranium. Yep, that's right, uranium. Not surprisingly, torbernite is also radioactive and slowly releases radon gas, which is colorless, odorless, and capable of inducing lung cancer. Yikes. But gem collectors are an adventurous lot, so torbernite specimens have found their way into a number of collections over the years. If you're in the market, it is recommended that you have the specimen measured with a Geiger counter before purchase, and please store it in a well-ventilated area, isolated away from everyday activities. And here's a pro tip. Check out specimens from the Congo and Zaire, which often feature the most impressive crystal growths. For the rest of us, let's keep an eye on those granite countertops. If they ever glow in the dark, well, you'll probably want to get that checked out ASAP. When it comes to deadly gemstones, a lot are like torbernite, unique mineral specimens sought out by niche collectors and stored away. Orpiment is a brightly colored arsenic sulfide made of the stuff that was once the poison of choice for murderous spinsters. Ingestion or topical exposure to significant amounts of arsenic can be fatal. Murder by arsenic was especially popular in the Middle Ages as its effects resembled cholera. It was said to be favored by the infamous Borgia family, whose rivals often found it flavoring their glass of wine. Cinnabar was another infamous crystal in medieval times. Work in Spain's cinnabar mines was considered a death sentence and reserved for slaves and convicts. Cinnabar is a mercury sulfide and has been called the most toxic mineral to handle on Earth. When heated or subjected to friction, cinnabar may release pure mercury, disrupting the nervous system and causing tremors, numbness, and even death. But the color of these red stones that often form near volcanoes has intrigued throughout history. It was used as a pigment for ceramics and in tattoos. Cinnabar crystals are pretty rare and can be very valuable. The Hunyan province in China is said to yield the world's finest crystals. Of course, the toxic nature of these minerals is a well-known part of their reputation amongst gem enthusiasts. And there are many more obscure minerals along those lines, like Coloradoite, a recently discovered mineral that combines mercury with another toxic metal, tellurium, and Hutchisonite, a mashup of three poisonous metals, lead, arsenic, and thallium. But I want to talk about some gems that are famous for their other properties, but are hiding some rather dangerous characters. Take phenakite, for instance. This is a hard, highly refractive mineral that is often mistaken for quartz. Large faceted pieces are displayed in the British Museum. It has also been embraced by the New Age gem community for its supposed ability to transport your consciousness to different planes of reality. We don't really know much about that. But what we do know is that it contains relatively large amounts of beryllium. One of the smallest elements around, beryllium is also responsible for gems like emerald and aquamarine. But watch out! Inhaling beryllium dust can cause beryliosis, a severe and chronic illness that can make breathing very difficult. Another bright, clear gem is sericite, which can form in a number of interesting shapes. Sericite snowflakes, consisting of bursts of thin reticulated crystals, are highly prized. It can also have a sub-adamantine luster and has a higher dispersion value than diamond. The world's largest faceted sericite is an 898 carat piece called Light of the Desert, which is featured in the Royal Ontario Museum in Canada. But sericite's main chemical constituent is lead carbonate, 
which was once used in paints until increasing cases of lead poisoning in children ultimately resulted in a ban. Fluorite is a very popular collector's gem that can come in many beautiful colors and cubic crystal shapes. It also contains fluorine, a very important element that was used to separate and enrich the uranium for the first atomic bombs. When material containing it is ground into dust or burned, fluorine can be released and absorbed into the body. It causes skeletal fluorosis, which weakens bones and damages joints. Outbreaks of this have occurred in China's Gizhou province, which is also known for its many fine fluorite specimens. Moonstone is another beautiful gem often used in jewelry. People know it as a birthstone for the month of June and for its adularescent effect, where light interacts with alternating structural layers, producing a floating blue light inside the gem. But what you may not know is that moonstone is largely composed of orthoclase, a radioactive mineral with small quantities of uranium that can release radon gas. Then there's quartz. That's right, quartz, maybe the most widely used mineral of all. Its wide varieties of attractive crystals are a staple of many collections. Inhalation of quartz can cause a respiratory disease called silicosis. This is a major issue in factories that produce slabs for quartz countertops. Workers must wear respirator masks and water systems are often used to suppress dust production. With so many sketchy characters lurking in all these popular gems, what's a girl to do? Maybe stick with organics? Maybe not. Organic materials like pearls, amber, and coral can contain everything from bacteria particles to parasitic traces and even viruses. Sounds scary? Well, we've got you covered. Feel free to box up all your fluorite, sericite, moonstone, and pearls and send them our way. We'll carefully dispose of them for you. Okay, so there is a happy ending to this tale. It's that most of these malevolent characters are quite securely imprisoned within these gemstones. Think of them like a little chemical Alcatraz you can keep on a shelf. For instance, fluorine is bonded with calcium and fluorite, and this makes it very unlikely to be released in its more harmful forms. Likewise, phenakite is pretty insoluble, so the release of beryllium is quite difficult. And yeah, moonstone is radioactive, but not any more so than, say, a banana. A good general rule is don't eat your mineral specimens, or snort them, or cook them, or try to find another way to put them into your body. If you're a lapidary and working with something that may produce vapors or powders, please take appropriate precautions. You definitely do need to watch out for asbestos and other fibrous materials like arianite, which can wreak havoc when inhaled, but most of these are not commonly encountered. And always wash your hands, it's basic hygiene. If you follow these guidelines, you should be okay with most mineral specimens, but do your research. And if you have any other questions on safety and handling, please check out our website, gemstones.com. By my count, we hit on 14 potentially harmful gems today, but of course there are many more. Did we miss your favorite? Let us know down in the comments and we'll try to get to it in a future video. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Thanks for watching.